In this lesson, we'll block in our base midtone color, followed by roughing in shadows and highlights for our clouds. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in our previous lesson, we started off by basically establishing the sky using a gradient. And then after that, we basically went in and started outlining the overall kind of formation of our clouds. Again, we're kind of going for some big kind of puffy, poofy clouds, something that you would see with kind of a cumulonimbus type of cloud formation. So we kind of started off with the outline, and then we came in and just did additional outlines for some of those additional um, cloud formations, those additional kind of puffy formations throughout. And I, again, I just want to kind of stress that you want to kind of keep these lines um, very organic. And when I say that, you don't want to have any kind of reoccurring patterns. You really want to try to avoid any kind of consistency that's very recognizable to the eye. Now, keep in mind, this is just very loose. It's kind of a roadmap for us to follow. But it's a good idea to really think about that kind of stuff at the beginning before we go in and really start kind of refining any part of our clouds. Okay? So what we want to go ahead and do now is drop in kind of a base mid-tone something that's really not too dark or too light, something kind of in between. Um, then we're going to build from there by layering on, or blocking in rather, shadows and highlights. So let's come back to our layers panel, okay? And let's go ahead and make a new layer. And I'm just going to call this layer base. All right. And now let's go ahead and grab our brush tool. And let's go ahead and switch to this hard round brush since we're going to be blocking in all of the, these different values here, these values and these colors. So again, these are just default brushes that come with Photoshop. Okay, so we'll just use that hard round brush. And now what I'd like to go ahead and do is let's double click on our foreground color there. And let's maybe pick something that, again, it's not too dark, not too light. Something kind of in between. We'll kind of see what that looks like. That feels pretty good. Now again, it looks lighter than the background, but I'm thinking of it in contact in context with um, the shadows and the highlights that I'll be dropping in. So this will actually work as a nice mid-tone. So just very quickly kind of filling in all of this information. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to come absolutely right up to uh, the edges of your overall outline for the entire cloud formation, which is pretty close. So again, we're kind of creating another roadmap for us to follow, right? This is, this is where we kind of block in kind of the guts of the cloud. So our shadows, our highlights, our mid-tone here. And how we basically block in all that information allows us to make those decisions um, later on and how we start to blend those values, those colors together. Okay, so we're almost finished here, kind of dropping in this mid, mid-tone, basically our base um, color for our clouds. Now let's go ahead and create another layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this one Shadows. Okay, great. Now what I'd like to go ahead and do is actually kind of change up my brush tip really quick. Um, let's go ahead and go to our brush panel, and I'm just going to go ahead and pinch this little crosshair right here. Let's rotate it a little bit. This is just kind of a personal preference. Um, when we, when I paint, I kind of like having a flat brush. It kind of feels like I'm chiseling away um, the forms and kind of pulling them out here in our, our cloud formations. Now, we for our shadows, we want obviously a darker color. So we'll go ahead and come back to our color picker there. And we'll kind of go with something maybe like that. That feels appropriate. Okay, so basically, again, those outlines that we dropped in in the previous lesson, that kind of allows us to figure out where we want to drop in some of these shadows, kind of in some of these crevices. Now, the first thing you really want to think about uh, when you start dropping in shadows is where is your light source coming from? That's really important because if your shadows are all inconsistent, then your clouds aren't going to look very believable. So our light source is going to be probably somewhere up there. So basically the light's coming in this direction from the upper screen left of this canvas. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of start with this little outline right here of these um, kind of puffs of clouds right here. And again, keep it very loose. We're not trying to be precise or get detailed with anything at this point. 
Um, often that's a problem that we run into, especially with um, painting anything that is supposed to feel organic. We try to get really detailed, really quick, and you don't want to do that. You want to kind of build it slowly, build it kind of loosely, and this is really, again, kind of a layered process that we're taking and kind of building up these clouds. So we want to kind of start off loose, get all the information in there that we need, and then begin to kind of mold it to our liking, okay? So right around here along this outer edge of this formation right here, this, this one that's kind of poking out, again, I'm thinking of the light source, so there's probably going to be a shadow probably right around here basically being cast. Again, think of the light kind of coming in that direction. We might have kind of a shadow down in there. And so again, if we look back at our reference image, you can kind of see down in those some of those crevices, some of those areas right there, basically where we have these forms that are overlapping one another, kind of like right in there as well. Those are kind of areas where the light isn't penetrating as much. Now, the thing to note about clouds is unlike a lot of other formations that are very organic in nature, um, the shadowed areas are going to receive just a lot more light that's basically being scattered throughout all of the particles that make up these clouds, all right? So that's something we want to kind of think about later on, uh, especially as we start um, blending all these different colors, these values uh, together. So I'm just kind of moving around the entire canvas. I'm trying not to really spend a whole lot of time in one space. Again, trying to keep it kind of loose thinking we'll probably have some shadows kind of down in this area as well that aren't being completely hit by the sunlight. Now, our shadows aren't going to be all this dark and consistent throughout the entire composition. Again, we're just kind of laying in the information that we need to basically sculpt with or play with as we build these clouds. Just kind of come, coming around some of these little crevices right here along these outlines, kind of trying to get an idea of how some of these forms kind of wrap around. And so I like to start with the shadows. Um, you could start with the highlights first, you know, thinking about your light source first, dropping in those highlights, and then follow it up with the shadows. But I think both approaches um, will work fine. Okay, so it's starting to kind of feel pretty good. Just already, I'm already starting to get a sense of the overall form of these clouds, even though we're being still very loose. So as I do this, I'm kind of visualizing these individual little cloud puffs, if you will, and I'm just kind of thinking about how they wrap around. Okay, so that's starting to kind of feel pretty good. Just kind of thinking about where we want some, a few more shadows in here. And the reason I'm being very loose, again, is it's allowing me to kind of create these organic uh, shapes, if you will, for these shadows. Again, if you look at an image of some clouds, you can see that each one of these shadows is, is very kind of um, asymmetric. There's no absolute symmetrical um, definition to them. Again, think of this whole entire formation as being very organic. Um, there's no reoccurring um, patterns, okay? Okay, so now what I'd like to go ahead and do is start kind of basically roughing in where I'd like some highlights to go. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and click right here on that little icon above our foreground and background color and then click on this arrow to switch to white. And we're just going to start basically daubing in here with our paintbrush just areas where we're going to have basically our prominent highlights. So just think of this as, you know, we're dropping in all this paint and we're just going to start kind of bringing it together, start mixing it, blending it together. And so at this point, it still may be a little bit hard to kind of vi visualize how these clouds are going to look. My best advice to you is, again, kind of study a lot of different images of clouds, go out and take lots of pictures, and that's really going to kind of give you a strong reinforcement in your mind as to how you want your clouds 
um, to really look. But if we look again, just back at our reference image, I'm kind of daubing in just kind of these major areas where the light is hitting. And we're going to start to um, begin to blend our midtones, our shadows, and our highlights, start blending them together. And we're going to kind of start talking about how we want to kind of have a nice smooth gradation in just some of these different forms. And then we, when we get into areas where we have forms overlapping or kind of bumping into each other, where we have these little crevices, then we'll have kind of darker shadows in there. So just kind of coming around the tops of some of these rounded outlines. Again, I'm keeping it very loose. I'm not worried about coming right up to the edge of each one of those lines. I'm just kind of thinking about the light source. Again, it's kind of coming from that direction. Just kind of dropping in a few more over here. So again, we're, we're dropping in all the information that we need to basically play with and start blending and start kind of sculpting and molding these clouds. And so as we do this, we can also kind of jump back. And if we want to, we can kind of continue the kind of the placement of some of these shadows as well. But so far, I'm starting to kind of like how this is beginning to pan out. Starting to kind of get a strong visual in my mind how these clouds are going to look. So right here, this is kind of an area, again, that's kind of overlapping. This area right here of these kind of little cloud formations, these kind of little puffs right here, it's overlapping this formation right here. So we kind of have a little bit of shadow that'll kind of be down in that crevice right there, okay? 